No, this is supposed to be a slow time of the year. <laughs> you know, I think we all saw that video right before your final kick in the Super Bowl of, of Tom coming over and saying, why don't we just kick the field goal? How much confidence did that give you that Tom, you know, best quarterback in history, wants to kick a field goal in that situation? I mean, I don't look, I don't, I don't watch that stuff. So I'm glad we won. I'm glad I made that kick. You know, you know the Patriot way. That's the pass. We're moving forward, and uh, you know, anytime your team has confidence, it's cool. But I don't go back. I haven't watched one Super Bowl I've ever played in on replay. You know, I don't want to ever get too high or too low. So I just kind of move on to the next year. And uh, it was a great, great win and great experience. And you know, there's 10 million things said in the and throughout any game. And you can take out anything one person says and twist it any way you want to. So I'm far from believing in whatever anyone has opinions on stuff like that. So that's just how I feel about it. Steve, what were your expectations heading into this off season? Did you always expect to end up back here? Uh, well, I mean, I played 13 years and I'd never been a free agent, so I had no idea what to expect. And having a lot of time to sit back and think about what I really wanted. Uh, really reassured me how much I really did want to be here and couldn't have been happier that it worked out the way it did. Um, you know, it was a weird experience, like, you know, eight, nine years ago when I don't have kids and a family and roots here, it's, uh, it's a completely different ball game. And um, being able to take my time and think about what I really wanted and, and go over all the factors. And there's so many, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, it's nice when other teams show interest in you and, and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, um, you know, I would like to try to finish where I started. And that meant a lot to me. It meant a lot to my kids and my family. And we are ecstatic to have two more shots uh, to play for the Patriots. Was there ever a moment you thought maybe it wouldn't come to fruition? Or? Well, yeah, I mean, business is weird in the NFL, and you don't really know until you're in it. And um, there's, you know, millions of things that go on. and you know, decisions that have to be made and, you know, you know, I don't like to get too involved in the business side of it. I just kind of tell my agent what I think and he tells me what they think and what people say. And um, it was a weird experience having to wait so long to, yeah. to see what other teams are out there and, and stuff like that. But, it, you, know, it, you know, good things come to those who wait and um, uh, I couldn't be more excited to be here. What were some of the things that, that you wanted, I guess? You, oh, that's, you know, I'm just excited for a chance to play. What does it mean that you could spend your whole career, decade and a half or so, with one team? Does that mean something extra to you? To, to me, it means, it means a lot. Um, you know, it's a very fragile position, and it doesn't take much to be at the top or the bottom uh, in, a, in a position uh, such as mine. And to, uh, to be able to have a chance to do it in, you know, the, one of the most high-pressure teams in the history of sports and have a chance to continue to do it and, I think it would be tough to go somewhere else. And, you know, the grass might seem greener on the other side, but it's not always that way. And I kind of like the, I like the challenge of being here, the, the bad weather. Obviously, we've all been getting terrible weather the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, the pressure of the, game, the big games and all that stuff. And just the opportunity to have a chance to keep playing with a lot of the friends and teammates that I've made. And um, to me, that means the world a lot more than, um, other things that could be offered from other teams. Steven, you mentioned how things have changed. You know, like you said, you didn't have kids or a family or roots here back nine years ago, and now you have that. And also, you're one of the older guys in the locker room. What's changed from that regard in the locker room now that you're one of the guys who has been around a lot longer? Yeah, I mean, a lot. You, know, you have less and less in common with the guys. I mean, I get along with everybody, but, you know, I can't go running out, hanging out, chasing chicks, uh, you know, with a lot of the young guys. So. But it's cool, you know, being one of the older guys, it's cool, you know, you don't really, and, you know, go tell people how to do things, but people do come to the older guys and ask questions, not necessarily about football, just how's it like in the locker room, where people live, just stuff like that, and, um, you know, there's a, a respect in the NFL of guys who play for a long time, especially with the same team, and that carries over from any position to where it's kind of like a fraternity, so to speak, like you see a guy like, oh, that guy played 10 years in the NFL. He must have done something right. So to get little, little comments like that is pretty cool. But, you know, I'm just having fun. This keeps me feeling young. You know, I get to bring my kids in the locker room during training camp. My daughter's been to three Super Bowls, and she's not even three yet. 
my, you know, my oldest son has been to five. Um, you know, it's a, it's a dream come true. You know, I wouldn't change, uh, you know, I wouldn't change anything for the, the journey I've been able to have and look forward to continue to try to make a couple more memories. Now there's an age gap in the locker room with you guys like you and Tom and then some of the rookies. But also we, got ben, the, we got Ben now, so yeah, and then also I'm with the third oldest now. With, uh, you know, you have Skardecki and then you have young guys like Pellegrino. What's that like? There's difference in age, but at the end of the day, it's just football. Yeah, I mean, well, this, this building and stuff, and I'm sure Coach Belichick's talked about this before, you know, this building is built on respect and working hard and accountability and doing your job. You know, we say the same things over and over again, but we really try to live it and work hard, do your job, don't make excuses, put the team first. And when the coaches do that, that feeds down to the players. And then when the players do that, it's a mutual respect thing. It's, it's a lot different from, like, high school football where the coach is just chewing you out and telling you suck and yelling at you all day, every day. There's a little bit of mutual respect, especially um, in the professional level. I mean, there is times where, you know, you do get yelled at, but it's not like every second of the day, kind of like in middle school and high school football. So, you know, there's a great professional relationship between all the coaches and, and all the players, and, and I think it's, you know, one of the reasons it's such a great uh, environment to be in. You mentioned Ben. What do you remember about him from his first time here? I just remember walking in as a rookie, and I was like, man, that dude looks like the Under Armour mannequin <laughs> in the, uh, <laughs> when you go to the sports store. But Ben's a, Ben's a great dude. Really good guy, and uh, you know it's it's cool to have uh, one of the oldies back. Some of the, or a lot of the kickers play until their 40s. I guess Adam Van Terry, Matt Bryant. Could you see yourself being one of those guys? I mean, I just I just try to take it year to year. Honestly, I mean, there's so many factors that go into how long I can play, and you know, there's not a lot of guys who do it in the 40s in the Northeast. So that's kind of one of the things that you have to keep in mind, but. I try to stay singing, like focused on the task at hand, and I'm really excited to try to have a good 2019 season. And if I start thinking I'm going to play for 10 more years, and then you know, aren't focused on this year, then that's doing a disservice to the team. You know, if I could, sure I would. I, that's not like one of those like crazy goals that I'm setting out there. I never thought I'd play 13 years, so, and you know, I got here with that kind of attitude. So I'm just going to keep taking it year to year. And just try to enjoy the process and having fun and the ups and downs of professional football. Joe, George, obviously, he's been your special teams coach for a while now. He's taking on some additional responsibilities as a wide receivers coach. What's been your experience of, of learning under Joe for the last few years? Joe's been great. I mean, as a special teams coach, I mean, I would say those guys deal a lot more with the coverage guys. Mm -hmm. And they just kind of watch what we do as specialists. And, you know, they time us and they... You know, we watch film with them, but it's more like a back and forth kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when, when you do something like kick or punt or snap, um, you're trying to do like the same thing over and over and over again. So they just will say, hey, man, you looked a little different today. Or, hey, you look like you're kicking the ball too hard or you're picking your head up. Or, you know, it looks like you're starting to hit the ball a little left. Let's talk about this kind of thing. It's not like um, you're going out there and he's giving you a tip on every, every play. So, it, like, it's one of those things. It's a respect thing. You know, um, and when I first got in the league, like Brad, Brad Seeley and then Scott O'Brien, it was a lot like in telling me how, how they did it with other guys and how many kicks a guy did a day. Or like, you know, when I was with this guy, this guy made this many kicks a day. You should strive to do that. And just imprinting knowledge and things that um, you don't know when you first get here. And then when you've been there for a while and you have an idea, it's just kind of like a mutual respect relationship. Like, Hey, how much? How many kicks do you need today? Or hey, you know, how do you feel today compared to the other day? Because you know, you you feel a lot different at 24 than you do when you're 35. So there's a lot more back and forth talk, and um, it's a great relationship. And Joe does a great job. Joe works hard. I don't know. If, I don't know if Joe ever leaves the building. So um, you know, with us, I think there's, you know, I think he's going to do a great job handling both. And he, with special teams, he used to handling a lot of stuff. And moving parts with everyone on the team anyway, so uh, um, you know I'm wishing them good luck, and I don't think it'll change the way that we interact though. You know, I'm take two more. Getting ready for the upcoming year here. When you look at your job, I'm curious how you look at the different aspects of it, like how you look at the kickoff portion versus the, the field goal kicking portion. Do you spend as much time on both? Are your workouts geared towards one more than the other now in your career? How does that work for you? 
I mean, I would say you always practice field goals a lot more than kickoffs. I mean, I would equate kicking off to like hitting on the driving range. I mean, obviously you want to, you know, we, you know, we work on things like hitting it short and hitting it in the corner and hitting it high. But at the end of the day, I'm really just swinging as hard as I can. Field goals are so much more attention to detail that goes into it. So, and plus, if a kicker were to get injured, nine times out of ten, it's on on the kickoff. So, um, it's one of those things like you got to kick off enough to where you're comfortable with your rhythm and, and your steps. But you know, you could go out there and kick field goals all day. You kick too many kickoffs. Uh, it'll tire you out a little bit more. So you have to watch out how much you actually do kickoff-wise. And I know like a guy like Thomas Morstead who used to do it, like he was like, I could punt all day, but kickoffs you just can't do all day. So it's one of those things that it's like all effort, balls to the wall, and then field goal is more just like a smooth stroke. So The reason I ask is, and you've obviously had a lot of success, you guys have, as a team have had a lot of success with the kickoffs and the teams that seem to be. Do you ever feel like you would benefit from a break as far as the kickoff portion of it goes? The team, you know, obviously it's a draft for the guy who's a, who's a punter, but it sounds like he has some kicking experience as well. Is yeah, I mean, you just, every year is different. Every year is one of those things. I, I personally love kicking off. It's, it gives me another chance to be on the field. You know, the hardest thing about kicking field goals sometimes is you don't know when you're going to play. You don't know what situation you're going to be in. Um, you know, I remember in the Atlanta Super Bowl, it's two weeks of the biggest buildup of your life, and I didn't step on the field until there was two seconds left in the, in the second quarter. So those are the things that you have to deal with in my position. Um, and the more I get on the field, the more comfortable I am. So I love kicking off. And, you know, I mean, just like anyone else, after a while, you're like, man, I don't want to practice this. So, uh, but I love kicking off, and I want to try to do it as long as, as, as I physically can do it. Hey, we have one more right here. Can I uh, ask you to share your experiences overseas? What was the U.S. Road Tour like? And yeah, nice question. Thank you. Uh, it was unreal. It was a great experience. Um, you know, the amount of respect I have for our military and seeing them on an active base um, and to see how many crazy football fans are over there. I mean, we had so many Patriot fans over there. It was unreal. I mean, you know, you feel, you feel a little more important than you really are when you go over there and people are like, man, we watch you guys at 2 in the morning. And, you know, our whole week is, is, is you know, all we do is talk about football or, like, you know, you always get out the fantasy football things. And um, just to see the different jobs, it's a lot like a team to where, you know, you got the pilots and they're like the quarterbacks, and you got the the crew that works on it, and you got the guys that clean up after them, and everyone's job's important, and everyone has great pride in their job, and um, someone might not get as much playing time, kind of like me, but their job is very important, and the way they all come together and the the how they work for a common goal is very inspiring, and. Um, it's really cool, especially seeing the 18, 19, 20-year-old kids and seeing the kind of like scared look on their faces. And, you know, I don't know if they all want to be over there or not, but it's really cool to make that sacrifice to serve your country. And that's, not, that's a sacrifice that not a lot of us would be willing to take. And to give back to that and show that the NFL cares, the NFL and the USO does a great job in supporting our military. It was an honor to be selected to go. And it was just a, a great experience. South Korea was, was awesome. Yeah.